Hello everyone. In this lecture of LSI design, we'll be learning about circuit families. Uh, we have already learned about CMOS design, and in this lecture, we'll be learning about uh, other circuit uh, designs. For example, pseudo and MOS design or domino logic. Those are the logic logic uh, topologies that were being used before the static CMOS came in. Now. What makes a circuit fast? In, if you want to make the circuit fast, we know I is equal to C dvd T. That is the current flow a capacitance. This is the formula of current flow capacitance. Now, after integrating it, we get the propagation delay is equal to C by I into del V. Here C is the capacitance. That is, if we decrease the capacitance, our propagation delay will decrease. I is the current. If we increase the current flow, the propagation delay will decrease. And del V is the voltage swing or change in voltage. So if we decrease the change in voltage, the time uh, propagation delay will decrease. We want the propagation delay to be minimum. So what we can do, we can either decrease the capacitance or voltage swing or increase the current. Now the capacitance, decreasing capacitance becomes a problematic because of the PMOS present here. PMOS is a real enemy. Why? We have learned that, uh, we know that uh, mu P is almost uh, half to one third half to one third of mu n so what happens if we want to make beta p is equal to beta n what do we do we make uh, the width of p almost twice the, uh, the width of n and since the width of p increases that is width of p mass increases the capacitance of the p mass also increases that is the high capacitance is uh, for a given current is brought about because of the PMOS circuits. Now one way to solve this problem, uh, one way to decrease the propagation delay could be decreasing the capacitance and that can be done by a, taking the PMOS, uh, PMOS capacitances or PMOS out of the equation, out of the input, out of the input and there are some circuit families that are you uh, that can do this. So the first circuit family that we will be looking at is pseudo NMOS. In the uh, what pseudo NMOS is does the pull down network is designed as it was designed in case of static CMOS or the CMOS that we have learned. But the pull up network consists of a single PMOS and the pull up network is always on. You see the uh, here the gate of the PMOS is rounded. That means the pull up network is always on. As a result, when the V when V in is equal to zero, this P this N MOS is turned off and V out becomes one because the P MOS is on. And when V in is equal to one, this N MOS is turned on, and here we have ground. Since here we have ground, our V one becomes zero, but current flows through the P MOS to the ground, but no current flows through the output. As a result, output is equal to zero. So using pseudo C MOS, we can uh, pseudo NMOS, we can uh, implement all the equations uh, that we have been implementing using static CMOS. For example, if you are considering, uh, if we are considering NAND gate, the NMOS side of the NAND gate was like this. Two NMOS were in seri series. So, if we want pseudo NMOS logic, what we'll do is the pull up on the pull up side, we'll just connect a PMOS, and that PMOS will be connected to it here we will get the output this is the pseudo nmos representation of an AND gate now pseudo nmos representation has certain problems the problem is uh, there is no problem when the circuit is off or when the uh, output is y is equal to 1 there is no problem because the current flows through the pmos into the output but when y is equal to 0 what happens here in this node we have 0 volts in this node we have vdd volts and as a result the entire voltage is across the pmos and power is dissipated from the pmos power dissipated means power loss in case of cmos the pull up network would be open and this ground would be connected so when output would be zero in, uh, no current will flow and there will be no uh, current or power dissipated in case of uh, cmos circuits but in case of pseudo nmos even when the output is low, the uh, there will be current and there will be power dissipated. So we can say that the power consumption in pseudo NMOS is larger than in case of uh, pseudo NMOS would be larger than in what we find in case of uh, CMOS circuits. And there is also uh, again uh, when we look at the sizing sizings of the transistors, 
uh, we had considered that the width of PMOS is generally twice the width of NMOS because we want to keep beta P is equal to beta N. But here, there is no uh, pull-up network. There is only a single MOSFET. So, the, uh, the size of the single MOSFET is of our importance. We generally make the PMOS about one-fourth of the effective strength of pull-down network. That is, uh, for example, uh, if we considered any gates, uh, uh, we would design a pull-up network uh, in the CMOS circuit. Let us suppose the, the width of the pull-up network was four in that case. So, in pseudo NMOS, we will consider the width to be 1. That is, one-fourth of the width that would have been there in case of uh, CMOS devices. Now, as we have already said that in pseudo NMOS, the power consumption is more. Why is that power consumption is more? Power consumption is more because when the output is zero, there is still a flow of current and still uh, power is being consumed. And this power is called static power. Now, for each NMOS, this, uh, each PMOS, this power is in range of milliamperes or even microamperes. So, microamperes uh, apparently should not matter, but the number of gates are quite large. About, suppose the number of gates are 1 million, that is, number of transistors are, uh, PMOS transistors are 1 million, then this microampere or milliampere range of current will get a very high value and the power loss would be very high. That's why pseudo NMOS is generally not used at this moment. And another thing can be done that uh, when the output is low, when y is equal to 0, we can use an, in, instead of turning the PMOS always on, we can use an enable pin and we can uh, turn the PMOS off when the output is 0. If we do that, uh, the power consumption when the output is 0 will be decreased. But then again, it will mean more complexity in the circuit. Uh, now let us look at an example about power. Uh, the example, the problem statement says that a, a chip contains 32 words and 40 bit, 48 bit ROMs. It uses pseudo NMOS logic and uh, on average one word line and 24 bit lines are high. That means 30, uh, 31 word lines and 24 bit lines are lo low. 31 word lines and 24 bit lines are low on average. Now. It has been stated that static power drawn, drawn by a ROM, by the by a ROM, we mean the static power drawn by each PMOS is for pull-up network is 36 microampere and VDD is 1 volt. Since the static power is 36 microampere and VDD is 1 volt, for pull-up network, the total power becomes 36 microwatt. Now, uh, this total power is, uh, this static power is effective when the output is low. For each MOSFET, the static power is 36 microwatt. When the output is low, low the number of MOSFETs would be because of 31 uh, word line, the number of MOSFETs here would be 31 and 24 bit lines will be controlled by 24 MOSFETs. The total number of MOSFETs would be 31 by 24. So total static power de uh, developed would be 31 plus 24 into P pull up, that is the power of individual MOSFET and that would be uh, 1.98 milliwatt. It can be seen that 36 microwatt is very insignificant as compared to 1.98 milliwatt. Uh, and, and this is just, we are talking about just uh, here 31 plus 24, very low number of transistors. When the transistor number increases to maybe uh, 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 mega or giga range, then what happens? The power dissipation becomes very large and it poses a problem. So the uh, pseudo NMOS uh, family is not generally used at this moment. It has uh, it has become obsolete since about 1990s. Another logic is dynamic logic. Dynamic logic uses uh, clocked PMOS pull-up. That is, in case of pseudo NMOS logic, PMOS is always on. But in case of dynamic logic, uh, PMOS is clocked. That is, PMOS is uh, repeatedly switched on and off, on and off. And because of the two states of PMOS, switch on and switch off, there are two modes, pre-charge and evaluate mode. Uh, the circuit or the logic gate operates only in the evaluate mode. How does it act? Now, in the pre-charge mode, uh, this clock has to be zero. If this clock has to be zero, we know there is an output capacitance involved. When this clock is equal to zero, what happens? This PMOS is on and this capacitor gets charged. And then when this clock is equal, to, this clock becomes equal to one, 
then capacitor remains charged and the output y is equal to 1 and when we exert a is equal to 1 what happens this capacitor gets discharged to this direction and y falls gradually falls to 0 so what happens in case of pre-charge this case and this case the output will be 1 irrespective of whatever the input is in case of evaluate if the input is 1 the output since this is an inverter gate we are talking about the output would be 0 and there will be 0 in, uh, there will be a delay involved the delay is created by the time taken by the capacitor to discharge so this is the dynamic logic uh, in case of dynamic logic we can see that the uh, pmos is clocked and the circuit only only operates when the clock is high that means the circuit operates for half of the cycle and circuit does not work for the other half of the cycle the, uh, so whatever we want to connect uh, in this logic that that part of the circuit will have to be synchronized with this part and we have to make sure that that circuit also works on the for half of the time and does not work for the other half of the time now in the dynamic logic the example that we have seen we have a pmos for pre-charge or uh, pre-charge and evaluation and we have an nmos which is actually uh, which is the basic of the logic circuit here now what happens is when this pre-charge is uh, when this pmos uh, uh, the gate of the pmos is connected to zero that is given a single a signal of zero it is in pre-charge mode as a result current can flow in this direction here we have output now if in this at this time if a is equal to one then this mosfet also is short as a result what happened current directly flows flows from vdd to ground and this can create a huge surge of current which may burn both the pmos and nmos so when we are using dynamic logic we have to ensure that in the pmos uh, in the pmos sorry in the pre-charge zone when we are uh, using the pre-charge the pull down network cannot become zero if the pull down network becomes active then uh, the whole circuit would burn, burn down in order to ensure it we use footed uh, dynamic logic what do we do with the with the pull down network we connect an nmos in series and the nmos is connected to the uh, nmos is connected to the pre charge or the clock of it, uh, clock of the total logic uh, logic circuit then what happens when this is equal to zero this pmos is switched on and pre charge occurs that is the cap output capacitance get charged and uh, again when this is equal to zero this nmos is switched off since this NMOS is connected in series, the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, pull down network is switched off, and since the whole pull down network is switched off, uh, no, the, no current can flow in this direction. So, by connecting uh, an NMOS in series and connecting the gate of the NMOS with the clock, we are ensuring that at no point of time both the pull up network and the pull down network are on and as a result the uh, entire circuit the vdd and ground will not be sh shortened and the circuit will uh, will be operational and will not burn up that is we can use both footed and unfooted logic if we use unfooted logic we have to be very careful that in the pre-charge stage so uh, the inputs or the pull down network is not active but in case of footage logic we do not have to take such considerations it will automatically ensure that in the pre-charge stage uh, uh, the pull down network remains off now one problem arising out of dynamic logic is monotonicity what is monotonicity monotonicity is that uh, the dynamic logic gets required the inputs to be monotonically rising if you explain it further the input can be 0 and remain 0 can rise from 0 to 1 can be 1 and remain 1 but cannot input cannot be originally 1 and fall down to 0 why does it happen suppose this, this is the timing diagram of this circuit our a is at first 1 which uh, this is a footed logic so a is 1 or 0 will not matter in pre-charge zone in the pre-charge zone the output is uh, set to 1 because the output capacitor is charged so in the pre when there is pre-charge the output is 1 and when we put this clock is equal to 1 then what happens this pmos turns off and since a is equal to 1 
this NMOS is on and this NMOS is on. As a result, the capacitor gets discharged in this direction and the output becomes zero. Output becomes zero, the capacitor is fully discharged. Now, if the value of A is false, that is from, A, from zero, A becomes, uh, from one, A becomes equal to zero, then what happens that this, this side of the circuit is open and since it, we are in evaluate mode, this side of the circuit is also open. That is the output remains floating. Since the output is floating, there is no current that can charge the capacitor. As a result, what happens? The output should rise at this point because the input has fallen, but the output does not rise because there is no way, no connection of the output to the VDD. No way the output capacitance can be charged. As a result, the output remains zero and output again rises when in the P-star state. That is, this problem will not arise if, uh, if we look at it again. This problem will not arise if, uh, say, the input was zero and remained zero. Because if input was zero, this NMOS would be off. And if this NMOS is off, since uh, the capacitor is charged, there is no way capacitor can discharge can get discharged and as a result the capacitor uh, the output will remain one if the input is zero and turns into one at this stage when the input turns one this uh, this pull down network will be active and capacitor get discharged as a result the output can easily get from one to zero if the input was at one and stays at one again the capacitor will get, uh, get discharged and output can easily be zero but when the input is one was one before but it turned into zero at the midway through the evaluate stage then there is no path for the capacitor to get charged again as a result for monotonically uh, uh, it uh, the, the uh, dynamic logic works only for monotonically rising outputs uh, rising inputs now monotonically rising inputs uh, since the dynamic logic gate uh, work only for monotonically rising inputs uh, rising input it creates a problem when we want to cascade two circuits for example in here we have actually two inverters cascaded to each other two inverters cascaded to each other now the problem is suppose a is always kept one when a is kept one in the pre charge stage both a is uh, both a is uh, uh, one and output x is one because output x is uh, the, this capacitor is being charged by this uh, P charge through this PMOS and again this output Y is also 1 because this is being charged by PMOS. So in the pre charge is both X and Y are 1. But next what happens is when uh, we move to the evaluate stage what it says is the value of A is 1. The value of A is 1 ensures that capacitor gets discharged through this direction and as a result X becomes 0. Now logically, since this is also an inverter, since x is 0, x is becoming 0, y should become 1. But y does not become 1 because of monotonicity. <clears throat> that is, x becomes 0, that uh, there is a delay involved. And in after that delay, initially at the beginning of evaluate period, the value of x was 1. So after a certain period, x becomes 0. And as a result, uh, it is monotonically falling and since uh, our dynamic logic cannot work with monotonically falling device, uh, falling uh, logics, so this dynamic device, uh, this dynamic logic gates cannot be cascaded in, in this way. So there is, there uh, needs to be a way by which we can, uh, we can cascade two or more dynamic logic gates. That's all for this lecture. Thank you so much. In the next lecture, we'll be uh, trying to solve the problems that are associated with our uh, dynamic logic.